All right, so obviously we had a lot of car issues um, in the, the debut round with the R32 Skyline. So I wanna talk to you guys a little bit, tell you kind of the issues that happened, but also like have an open forum with you guys because I am really open to constructive criticism and I know there's a lot of knowledgeable people that watch this channel. So tell me what you guys think below as well as what uh, maybe you would have done differently going into it. One of the biggest problems besides the wiring, which was something that we were already plagued with going into it, it was power steering. Every lap, it was like a new issue with the power steering. So let's look at that and I'll kind of tell you guys what I think went wrong. All right, so what's interesting is I had pretty much the same setup on this car. We really didn't have many issues. We had a rebuilt rack and a rebuilt power steering pump, the same cooler, reservoir, same lines, but even before we got to the round, the like valve where it adjusts pressure, it ended up getting stuck. We ended up just like hammering it unstuck and then it was kind of working. One solution is try to find a larger pulley um, on the damper side and slow it down. Another idea would be to do electric power steering, but that's a lot of time and money and we honestly don't have like the resources in the shop to even do that. I think our best bet is to try to make this work somehow. Worked before, so it should work somehow. They like rebuilt the power steering pump, I think twice throughout the round. At this point, we're gonna do a new power steering rack, a new pump, try to figure out a smaller pulley, put that tensioner on and go from there. But if you guys have any other ideas, if there's any uh, RB experts out there, let me know in the comments below. But there's so many more issues, so let's talk about those. So one of the other issues in here that related to the power steering, the water pump pulley had actually come loose. And so I think that one was just an issue of um, it not getting bolt checked. It's like why bolt checks are so critical. But yeah, that was another issue, which was, was really fun. They messed with the alternator bracket. And then another fun one was the drive-by wire mid run. It just stopped working. Um, I like just lost power. It wouldn't go over 1800 RPM, even full throttle, even in neutral. We came back and Phil said that it like went into like a fault mode. We haven't seen that problem again. He said that in, in his opinion that maybe it had broken in more. And so all the calibration came out of whack. So hopefully that problem is good now. Another one, fuel just started spraying all over the windshield. I didn't know what it was. It looked like steam. I thought it was maybe one of the water lines in the front. Actually, the fuel was getting sprayed around the O-rings of the injectors. So they ended up shortening the standoffs a little bit so that they would press down to press more. But why that didn't show up in any of like the dynoing, nobody knows. Um, it's like a kit that goes together. I don't know why that would be the case, but yeah, that one should, should be fixed now. Another issue I had was on the first qualifying run, I went first, second, and then tried to shift third. It's set up for flat foot shifting, but when I tried to shift in the third, it was like literally locked out. And so that's why if you watched the qualifying or watched my last video, you would see me lift, let the car roll for a second, and then get into third. And then it was really late entry, so I just ripped the handbrake so I could get sideways. I don't know why that happened. I don't know if I just need to pull it even harder, um, but I guess, I think that's maybe just something I need to get used to driving it. And maybe there are certain scenarios where I do need to, to clutch in when I want to upshift. Probably just me not used to uh, the sequential and just a lack of experience. So that one should fix itself. I don't think there's really much we need to do there um, besides just getting in and driving it. All right, one other one, lag on the dyno. This car was really good about lag because we had the nitrous to help spool a turbo. We also had anti-lag, which was really helpful. We haven't tuned for nitrous yet. And then because we had to do like a last minute rewiring of the interior, we didn't have any of those features working anyways. So I didn't have nitrous or anti-lag. Maybe I had it geared wrong. I mean, that was my first time drifting this car in the dry. I really didn't trust the car. And so I didn't feel comfortable just like pitching it in. That was kind of what the, what I was gonna try to do throughout like my 12 practice laps before qualifying was continually 
push it a little bit harder each lap, go faster, 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 get comfortable in the car, learn it. That's a lot to do at FD. But if the car had worked, I think we would have had a better chance of getting there. But all three of my practice laps, the car had issues. And so then going into the first qualifying lap, even with the issues, a couple of the practice laps were like, they were okay. I was hitting like the last two zones and the touch and go, just like kind of bypassing the first outer zone because I didn't have enough speed. We thought that that would at least put points on the board, which I still believe that. And so that was my intent. Unfortunately, these cars are so powerful and gripped up and that course is built to have some speed going into the entry. It just really didn't work. And then with that locking out of third gear, um, I really didn't have much speed going into it and it just set me on a weird line. But analog and nitrous, those are two things that we will get working. As far as like adjusting turbo size, the reason I really originally chose this turbo was because this motor was meant to go in my pre-runner truck. When I realized we couldn't get the R34 here for competition, I kind of had to scramble and do everything I could to build a new car. And so I was like, let's use the turbo we have, make it work. It was pretty good once we got it on the dyno. Yeah, a smaller turbo might be more ideal in, in, in some ways, but I, I want to try to make this work because that's a lot of money, more tuning, a lot of fabrication, like all the intercooler piping and the downpipe is screwed if we do that. And we don't have the resources to do that. And I don't have the money. Knowledge. So we'll get the analog and nitrous working and we'll keep going. I mean, if I get to the point where it's like, yeah, this is just not drivable, there'll be a new decision to make. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at right now with the whole turbo sizing. All right, wiring wise, um, everything's pretty well buttoned up in here so you can't even see it. It just needs to get completely rewired in the interior. I think everything for like firewall forward and the rear firewall back is good where it really counts connecting everything making the cam bus system work connecting the pdms the keypads to the display to the ecu all that we need to start from fresh phil my tuner had built the engine harness it was originally intended for the tacoma and some stuff was missing that we needed on this one and so that was kind of spliced in afterwards and then my old mechanic jameson uh, he wanted to wait for phil to get there so they could kind of do it together but we kind of ran out of time it got rushed and then we were on this schedule of having to finish the car to get it shipped. And at this point, between it being messy and stuff not working, the best decision is just to start fresh. And so the guy who did the kind of like quick fix wiring in here during the event, he's gonna come at the time of filming this in about, I, I, I hope like a week, get on that. And once we do that, retune it. We got ethanol in so we can go back to ethanol, which is a lot healthier for the motor and it makes more power. I think that will be helpful and then we can start programming, get everything working again. And then in the meanwhile, we'll work on, on this other hardware stuff. But yeah, that's kind of the deal with the R32. I, I know this is a different video than normal, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys some behind the scenes, what's going on and kind of what our plan is. Again, anything that is constructive, I am open ears. I am not an expert. I'm learning in this whole thing. I'm trying my best I can. I have a team that's new to this. First year doing Formula Drift as well. We're doing our best with this whole thing. Anyways, appreciate all of you. Check out this video, hit that subscribe button. We'll be back out there soon. Peace.